My name is Costas Thalassinos, and my lab uses mass spectrometry to study the structure of proteins and protein complexes. Now, proteins are the key players inside the cell. They perform all the fundamental functions, uh, from replicating your genetic material to transferring oxygen throughout your, your tissues and, and the body. Now, what happens is um, proteins usually have to adopt their correct three-dimensional conformation in order to function properly. Sometimes, however, this doesn't happen due to mutations, for example. Um, what happens is they actually misfold, and when they misfold, they can aggregate, so they can stick to each other. And this is a characteristic of many sort of really bad diseases like al uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, alpha-1 and trypsin deficiency. Now, the other thing that's also important with proteins is that sometimes in order to function, apart from being folded properly, they need to come together with other proteins. So they're very sociable in that respect. So they come together and they form these large nanomachines uh, to perform the functions within the cell. Now, mass spectrometry can provide extremely important information regarding these protein nanomachines, which is often not obtainable by other biophysical methods. Um, overall, there's two types of experiments that we can do. Uh, we can either analyze these machines intact, or we can cut them into smaller peptides and analyze these peptides. We can answer questions like, for example, how many copies of each protein are present in these nanomachines? Um, are the individual proteins modified? If so, what are these modifications? Uh, which proteins are next to each other? Which ones are at the outside and which ones are at the inside of these nanomachines? Also, what is the overall shape of these machines? Now for this last question, we combine mass spectrometry to another analytical technique called ion mobility. Ion mobility is routinely used in airports for the detection of explosives and contraband. It separates molecules based on their overall shape. So more compact molecules will travel faster compared to more extended ones through an ion mobility device. Now the combination of ion mobility to mass spectrometry uh, gives uh, rise to a very powerful analytical technique. For example, if a protein coexists in two different conformations, using mass spectrometry alone, you might not be able to separate it because they will have the same mass. However, when you add ion mobility, what happens is you can then start separating these two different uh, conformations. Now we are combining all our methodologies, the ion mobility and all the other mass spec methods we use to study a protein called alpha-1 antitrypsin. Alpha-1 antitrypsin is a protein that's made in your liver and via the bloodstream it travels to the lungs where it performs its normal function, and this is to protect the lungs. Now, mutations in the protein um, cause it to misfold and aggregate. When this happens, people develop two things. First of all, liver cirrhosis, because these aggregates accumulate in the liver and they can't escape, but also they develop emphysema, because the protein cannot travel to the lungs to perform its normal function. Um, using mass spectrometry, we are trying to answer the following questions. How does alpha-1 antitrypsin proteins come together to form larger aggregates? What is the structure of these early aggregates? Um, can we use small molecules to inhibit the formation of these aggregates? And finally, how does the cell as a whole respond to the formation of these aggregates? For example, how do the protein networks within the cell change in order to cope with such an event? So mass spectrometry is actually really important in a structural biology uh, context, and it's been increasingly used. Um, and the last 20 years have seen great advances in the development of mass spectrometry. So we've had uh, improvements in ionization methods, in the sensitivity, and the resolving power of these techniques, but also we've seen rise to new uh, uh, experimental workflows. So its role is gonna become even more important uh, than it is already. Um, and of course, one of the things that still needs to be developed is, is the software to, to process such data. Because every time you have a new technique and you have new workflows, you generate new types of data, uh, but then the software needs to catch up in order to be able to process these data.